live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live inside theCUBE in HP Discover in Europe in Barcelona. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Chuck Smith, Vice President of Business Development for HP Servers Global Business Unit. Welcome back to theCUBE. Hey, appreciate it. Thank Great you. to see you Thank again. You um, so the server business, a lot of change going on. I know you've taken on more responsibility. Yeah, yeah. The server's coming together. You've got Mission Critical, Unix, Desktop, I mean, servers kind of Intel coming together. Yeah. But the market's changed with cloud and, uh, and everything else. Huge transition. So give us your quick take on what does that mean uh, to the to customers, the shift and inflection point around cloud, and how is that changing the game in the server business? Yeah, you know, I mean, you'll, you'll hear from us uh, throughout the week that, that, you know, whether it's from cloud all the way to Mission Critical, um, many of the use cases or workloads are, are um, growing for the, the compute and the server business, so we're really excited about what we're up to. Um, you know, I, you mentioned IBM's exiting the x86 server business and, and their networking portfolio, and so, you know, we think that's a huge opportunity um, for HP, but uh, it actually signals to our customers that HP's continuing to invest in the space, um, and, and they're starting to see that, um, you know, our strategy, which may have been, you know, questioned two or three years ago, really is continuing to be the same one on, a, on the same course, which is to continue to invest um, in their applications, the new style of IT. And what we're finding is that customers are starting to look at, you know, their infrastructure provider, and HP is becoming more and more that brand of choice. And that's our program, the smart choice. A lot of people will throw stones at HP, certainly, you know, as you guys are doing the turnaround, because oh, this happened to your, your competition. Oh, this is a commodity server, no one racks and stacks, and well, you have, to, you have to have servers somewhere. But you guys have been doing a lot of converged infrastructure for many, many years now. We've been on the ground with the Cube and chronicalizing what you guys have done. Certainly, you've always had a high-end server business, right? Absolutely. HP's had uh, um, the, the big iron boxes, and then certainly had the low-end servers, call them Wintel, whatever you want to call it, but as you guys moved into Converge years ago, you made that strategy change. As people look at this hyperscale, they want to be Amazon, but not everyone can build their own boxes. Um, you have open compute out there, so the shift in servers where I want the benefits of really low cost commodity hardware, but I want the performance of large scale kind of cloud-like environment. How do, how do you guys speak to that with that with this dynamic? Because you know, certainly IBM saying, hey, I'm, not, I, I'm going to give up that zero margin business or almost zero margin business and focus exclusively on big higher end servers. Yeah, well we think there's a different approach from a strategic perspective and, and you know, our tagline from a marketing perspective is the right compute for the right workload at the right economics. And you know, there's um, many of the, the public cloud customers where you know, massive scale uh, of repeatable infrastructure for what, if you will, a single app makes perfect sense. But in the enterprise where you have hundreds if not thousands of apps and you have users with varied uh, work, workload requirements and ever-changing business requirements, that, if you will, white box and commoditized server doesn't fit for that particular workload set. And so we think that, you know, our um, mission critical platforms for big data, for in-memory database, for you know, for uh, you know, uh, large database processing is extremely important. Uh, our blade business continues to be uh, an extremely important part of our portfolio, um, and there's lots of exciting things happening there with our OneView platform to manage the enterprise footprint. Um, our Gen 9 platforms for enterprise and mid-market, we're getting a lot of traction there, um, and we've done a lot of work to tune those platforms to the right workload. And then you'll see uh, from us, you, you saw our, our joint venture with Foxconn um, and our platforms to actually address the, the, the low end of that product set as well. And so when customers are looking for, you know, that, that if you will, low end of the product set with, with little to no features from a hardware perspective, we can provide that as well. And we have a, a business model that can support that and actually still be, um, you know, the, the right economic. So what you're team. saying is, so what you're saying, if I can break that down, yeah. is you can do scale out yeah. and scale up. Yeah. So you can mix and match, as you said, right and server. Converged, um, and, you know, and 
if you will, you know, the single discrete servers for, for small to medium business. So all four of those yeah. use cases make, you know, we can support well, all of that. Dave and I were talking, that's the ding on, that's the ding on the scale, uh, scale out, is that if you go commodity scale out too much, too reliant on that, you can not have a lot of leverage on the scale up opportunities where software becomes critical. So, yeah, yeah that's something that's important to customers. We've heard that. I wonder if we can um, come back to yeah, yeah. So I want to understand what's happening in the field and what the market dynamics are. What What's happening with the channel? A lot of the channel partners, that when, when that deal was announced, we talked to them and they were freaking out. How have you capitalized on that freak out <laughs> moment? So we, we, we launched a program called Smart Choice. We've been working directly with uh, uh, many of our largest um, HP partners uh, that actually have mixed businesses. We have also been actively working to uh, um, to recruit and engage with IBM partners uh, across the globe. We've got hundreds of partners that we've actually actively recruited into HP. Um, you know, with some of the offerings you'll see this week around our mission critical platforms and what we're doing with OneView and our storage offerings and, and networking, we actually have a portfolio that many of these value partners that IBM did, like you say, were freaking out, um, actually are very excited to work with HP. And so, you know, the portfolio, the programs, uh, the engagement and actually, if you will, the customer poll, because many of the customers that those channel partners were serving were also freaking out about yeah. what does this mean for my infrastructure. And so we've actually been quite successful to turn those IBM partners to HP and get their interest and been working closely with Super Samian and the, and the HP channel team. And many of the partners here in Europe, we actually have a number of receptions with uh, IBM partners here to actually actively engage with them and, and help them understand the breadth and depth of it. So you picked up some partners? You bet. From that? Like, yep. a, like a handful, a couple? Like hundreds. A, is hundreds? The, uh, yeah. Okay. We can say like a hundred. So now, yeah. now the, I got to ask the long term question. So you had, you had a competitor in IBM that, yeah. that never really wanted to be in that business. I mean, let's yeah. face it, yeah. right? They, yeah. They'd always sort of, ah, well, we're trying it, and, you know, rumors and so forth. Now you got a competitor in Lenovo yeah. that loves that, that low end sort of business, so called, you know, low margin business. That's huge margins for them. What do you, how do you see that shaking out? Uh, what do you see as some of Lenovo's challenges and what are some of the potential blind spots for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, that obviously the, uh, Lenovo's been um, messaging a lot that they're they're coming after HP and so on and so forth, but, you know, building an enterprise business, um, having the, the support, the having the, the customer relationships, having the portfolio all the way up to mission critical and really being that kind of a, a brand that customers trust is something you don't build overnight. And, and even the, the, the PC business, you know, we talk about how they, they've grown their business, but if you actually look at the numbers, it took them five years to actually get past a, a certain market share um, with their acquisition of the IBM PC business. And that was in much different shape than the IBM X series and Blade business, it, you know, was when they bought it. So, yeah, it, was we, leading, it was a leading business at the time. It, it was, yeah. the, their server business was it, not. Right, right. right. So, yeah. so I think that it's a much different game um, you know, they, they obviously have a strong footprint in China, and I was actually just there in China, and we've been uh, working a lot with the, the team there to actually, you know, go after uh, Lenovo right, right at the outset to ensure that we're extremely competitive. You know, Meg has been working on our cost structure, and our portfolio is better than it's ever been from a, from a cost and price point perspective. So, you know, we're ready, uh, even at that low-end transaction space, and we think they're going to be extremely challenged to build out a true enterprise business to compete with HP in the long run with our portfolio. And then you guys talk about the, the Foxconn yep. relationship that yep. you guys have. I mean, you're seeing this whole hyperscale trend that's yep. driven by Amazon and Google and, and Facebook. You'd love to sell it to those guys you know, directly. Um, maybe over time you can do that, but there's a lot of guys who want to replicate that model. I yep. presume that's the opportunity for you. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so we have been selling to, to many of those folks yep. um, and, and have relationships in, in many of those hyperscale customers. Um, and, and we think that, you know, if you actually look at the, the breadth of the service provider space, not just those, if you will, the brands you recognize, there's a lot of, you know, tier two, as we would call them, or, or smaller, but growing service providers that, that we are actively engaging with because um, building out a, a full service provider business is something that's very exciting to us, and we think that that's actually the play. Uh, I think secondly, when we talk about, you know, self-building, John, you mentioned it, th there's a certain scale point that, you know, very few of these providers can really get to. So, um, you know, we actually have the agreement with Foxconn, we have the portfolio, um, we have the go-to-market, uh, and we really have the ability to, you know,
you know, do many of the joint to market act, go to market activities that a lot of these service providers are looking for too. So it's not just about the hardware, it's about the broader ecosystem that we can bring in there. Yeah, I wonder if you could talk more about the requirements because the, you know, early on the perception was ah, they just want off the shelf white boxes, but they have they're more demanding than that, oh, yeah. it seems. I mean they've got they want levels of customization, like you said, they want an ecosystem. I wonder if you could talk more about the, the requirements. Well, I mean, I think what's interesting is we talk about open compute as being a standard, but if you actually look under the covers, the, it's, it's a standard for each one of the, the, yeah. the cloud providers that wants, their custom, <laughs> their, that wants their custom box as opposed yeah. to being any kind of standard. And right. so, you're absolutely right. So there's customization um, for, e you know, even for specific tiers within a particular provider. Um, and that takes that takes engineering know-how. That takes uh, you know capability, even for those those platforms you just stamp out. And that 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 takes some investment. That takes you know, if you will, attention to those customers. That mm -hmm. takes you know um, a, a lot of work. There's huge growing storage and networking requirements within those service providers. It's not just all about compute as well. And we think that's moving towards a if you will a commoditized profile that we think is is moving in our direction. So there's a lot of opportunity. Now talk about the um, challenges and the opportunities around migrating the workloads into a kind of this new modern infrastructure environment. You brought that up and I want to kind of tease it out because you know I can look at the from the cheap seats and say, oh man, cloud is so easy. All you do is move your workloads into the cloud and we're done. Come on. It's yeah. so easy, right? It's really not that easy. There is some challenges, certainly Greenfield, if you want to go out and say, hey, we're going to build from scratch, mobile infrastructure, and you got a clean sheet of paper, right. okay, I can really look at that architecturally, and it's somewhat straightforward. Um, still not that straightforward, but when you have legacy like Windows, you mentioned the migration, you have a lot of legacy stuff. As an enterprise, what, what do you do? What do, we, what do I do if I'm a CIO? I say, hey, you know, Chuck, I'm buying into the scale out, scale up flexibility. I love Agile, I love Converge, right. um, but I got a, I got this baggage I got to deal with. How do I move over? How do you have those conversations? What do you talk about? What are the top three things you guys address, and and what is the roadmap? Yeah, I mean, so you know, it, every customer situation is different. So there's no, you know, I can't just tell you here the three steps to do it. Otherwise, the customer would likely. Well, what's it, what's the pattern? What's the general pattern that you see? Well, we we actually, you know, we tee up a, a multi-day transformation workshop where we go in and we have the conversation with the customer. What's the what what are the data needs? What's the application needs? You know, what what if you will, from a Windows perspective, for example, uh, Windows 2003, um, what's actually driving you to, to keep this application and why haven't you moved? Sometimes it's just inattention. Sometimes there's, there's actually some real underlying architecture issues. And so we'll go work on that. It could be related to SQL. It could be related to other things they're doing from a, uh, you know, from, a from an infrastructure perspective, their storage, what have you. And so we'll go through and, and work through that with them and then actually set a, a project to transition and move workloads off of a, a particular, whether it be Unix or Windows or what have you. And that, that actually moves it to modernized infrastructure. And in some cases, you can move those services to, to the cloud. But in some cases, our customers don't even want to move it to the cloud. They just want to have it on if you want modernized and supported platforms. Yeah, and most don't because you know that's one of the funny thing you, you squint through all the hype. It's like, look at you know on prem was working for people, so um, cloud is kind of low hanging fruit. Yeah, test and dev. We've been hearing that for five years now, and that's cool. You know, put some yeah. non mission critical stuff in the cloud. I guess I, I get that. Um, but I want to go into a different direction and ask you, yeah. what's going on here at the show? I know it's day one. Yeah. You had the CIO event you mentioned before we, we jumped on the air here. What's happening in HP Discover this year? From your perspective, share with the audience, what's happening here? What's the big theme? What are you guys talking about? What are you, what activities you're getting involved in? And what are some of the cool things going on? Well, I think, you know, just the, the I mean, first of all, the feeling, the buzz is just, I mean, it's, it's hopping. We, we have our, our largest you know, attendance from a European show yet for Discover, so just, the, the um, you know the, the perception and the feeling about HP is really positive. So that's actually a, a great. I mean, just from last night's reception and what we're seeing even just this morning, it's uh, you know attendance is buzzing for first day. It's actually quite quite exciting. If you look at what what we're um, messaging for the show uh, on the enterprise group side, it's really about um, cloud all the way to mission critical. Um, you'll see announcements around, and I'm not going to steal anybody's thunder, but a, a new platforms from a scale-up perspective, um, uh, announcements around scale-out, storage, networking, and, and absolutely the services to drive that. We also, our, our enterprise services team will announce very exciting um, you know, partnerships and relationships, so it's really just about extending our you know, 
go to market, our, our capabilities, and just proving to um, you know the world and, and to our customers and partners here at the show that HP's here. We continue to invest in the best and most innovative roadmap and portfolio in this business. It's the same drumbeat. I mean, it's like we've been here now, this is our fifth year at HP Discover, and um, I'd say so five years ago. Stay on message. Well, there was a couple, five years ago, obviously some things happened. Big data became a big part of it. Yeah. The autonomy thing was going through the system. Now you, it's been the same drumbeat all the way through, and yeah. you know, uh, it's just stay close to the knitting and, and stay close to the business. Well, I mean, I think that the customers are actually seeing that, you know, what we were talking about three years ago, we now have, we're shipping, we're delivering, and, and we're sticking to that vision, and, and they actually like that consistency. Um, and, and, you know, you think back to when you referenced it a few years ago, um, there was a lot of questions. But now, we, we've got a lot of the answers, and, and actually a lot of the confidence um, is coming back in the customers about HP, and certainly we've got a lot of confidence that we can solve, the, you know, those real big problems. Great, awesome, and obviously we're in Barcelona, so it's a lot of European, obviously you're involved with the telco business, yeah, big yeah. telcos out here, a lot of different telcos, so it's a little bit more, is it more of a telco feel, some more, more different conversations here? What's different from the U.S. to this show from your perspective? Yeah, I think that, you know, when we, you know, the European uh, show, um, we, we've got, you know, great customer relationships here. If you actually look at our share position, Europe is, is our highest share position from a, from a server storage and even networking perspective, so, there, there's a lot of respect for the brand. Um, there, there's a great management team and sales team here that has continued to execute extremely well. Um, and, and you know, you're right. I mean, most of the attendees here from you know, from Europe and, and Middle East um, close by. So it's a global um, business. I mean, absolutely. The, the customers, even in North America, have global operations, and a lot of companies can't capture those business opportunities because they're not global. And we know a few startups in Silicon Valley that have to do deals because the consumption requirement in cloud and on-prem on, on is global. That's right, that's right. And so we were able to deliver on, on those types of uh, capabilities that others can't, right? Awesome. Chuck, thanks for coming back on theCUBE and great to see you part of the scality announcement on the ground with our CUBE team. Um, you know, Jeff Frick was out there with you guys. I did the scality piece. It's a nice little, nice little new CUBE product. Appreciate yeah. uh, you coming on theCUBE. Chuck Smith, Vice President of Business Development, HP Global Services here inside theCUBE, kicking off day one of wall-to-wall, -wall, three days of live coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back thanks, after guys. this short break.